Would you stand with us this morning? Let's praise the Lord. Mm, yeah. Well, Jesus said it. Jesus said it. Jesus said it now. Jesus said it. He said, believe on me. Believe on me. Believe on me. Believe on me. Jesus said it. Jesus said it. The word of God said it. Jesus said it. Jesus said it. Jesus said it. Jesus said it now. Jesus said it. the Lord this morning. Amen. It's wonderful to see you. We want to welcome you here to Stratford High Church of God this morning. If this is your first or second time here today. This, you are a special guest and we want you to feel at home today. But if you would just for a moment, go ahead and have a seat. We got some announcements and some information we want to get into, uh, get to you this morning. It is great to see everybody here. The first thing we'll let you know that uh, to get information about the church and uh, different things that are going on. You can always get one of the bulletins as you come in or as you leave in the morning. But then also, if you look in front of you, inside uh, the pew right in front of you, there should be a brochure. That brochure is about to change here in the next week or two. But for right now, it shows all the groups, the small groups, the Sunday school and Wednesday night classes we have here at the church. But within the next two weeks, we'll have a new one out that gives you all the information. Starting September, we have a new quarter starting which will have all the small groups, all the fellowship activities with uh, Sunday school and Wednesday night to give you all the information if you want to get connected to other people. But we do want to, uh, once again, welcome you here. There is some more information we want to get to you. As I said, you can look in the, the bulletins for more information. The pastor may talk about this in the message later today, but one of the great things we love to do, it's 
primarily of who we are and what we're about is, uh, is community. We love unchurched people. We love people who uh, are outside these walls. Amen? And anytime we can have any type of opportunity to serve them, to let them know that Jesus loves them and we love them and we appreciate them, we, we, try, we take that very serious. Uh, this Friday, you'll notice, once again, as I said in the bulletin, we have something called the 413 Basketball Camp. We'll be hosting that at the, at the Kingdom Sports in Franklin. It'll be uh, this Friday from 9 a.m. to 11.30. And uh, it's, it's completely free. All kids, whether it's in our church or kids that are in the community from first grade on up, uh, our wonderful coach, Brian Bales, the coach of the year, will be there. He is bringing a, uh, a player from the Ohio State University on the basketball team, some of the coaches around the area. And we're going to serve these kids. We're going to teach them about basketball. But in there, Pastor, myself, and Richard will be there. And we're going to pray for these kids. And we're just going to show them the love of Jesus. And we're just going to serve them. And it's completely open, completely free. We are not charging. We want as many kids to come out and to have a wonderful time. So we're excited about that. And then also on October 6th, from 12 to 5, we're having our annual Family Fun Fest. We will be coming to you here shortly, probably next Sunday, and asking for those who are interested in serving. Um, you know, obviously, last year we had about 1,500 people. This year, we're, our goal is to have 2,500 people here. And once again, just really make that for the city of Middletown to come in and, and uh, come to our church and us have an opportunity to serve them. So we do want to get that information to you and let you know that if you're interested in serving and helping us to serve the community that day, uh, there will be some days where we're going to get together and have some meetings and to uh, get some information about that. Also, if today is one of your first times, uh, maybe it's your first or second, or maybe you've been here within the last six months just newly coming. You know, it's a bigger church, and it's hard for us as the pastors to get to know you. So right after service, if you've been here less than six months, we'd ask if you go out this way, down the hallway in the back, there's a choir room back there. Uh, all the pastors will be back there. There will be some light refreshments. And we just want to have an opportunity to get to know you, get to know your name, and get to know your face, and uh, get some information and to be able to, uh, to hang out with you. So we want to, right after service, we're going to head back there and uh, spend some time with you. And the last two announcements. Last week we mentioned this. The bulletin said otherwise. But on August 11th at 6 p.m., uh, as we mentioned, pastor is a regional elder. He is a pastor to the pastors of 23 churches in this region. And that Sunday night at 6 p.m., we're going to get together, and we're just going to have one huge service with all those churches. The choirs are coming together, and it will be here at Stratford Heights. I know the bulletin said at Hamilton, but there was a change in that. It will be here at Stratford Heights at 6 p.m. And lastly, how many of y'all just love your pastor? How many of y'all think we have the greatest pastor in the entire world? Well, on Sunday, August 25th, we are going to have our annual Pastor Appreciation Day. We'll be having services in the early morning and mid-morning. We will not be having it Sunday night because right after the mid-morning service, we're going to head to the gym and have some fellowship with our pastor. And so we're just going to celebrate him and appreciate him that day. And we do want to get that information to you to be ready uh, to come with uh, some gifts and to come with some big hugs and let him know how much you love and appreciate him. But once again... We're delighted you're here this morning. We know you can be many different places, but the fact that you chose to be here at Stratford Heights and to, uh, to seek the Lord this morning is just, it's a blessing. And so we want to welcome you here. If this is your first or second time, we'd ask that you would just remain seated just for a moment. But of all of our normal attenders, we go ahead and stand at this moment. We want to get out of the aisles and shake your hand and get to know those that are here for the first time. So let's do that. Welcome to Stratford Heights, and God bless you this morning. One, two. Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. There's none like you. Into the darkness you shine. And out of the ashes we rise. There's no one like you. There's none like you. Greater, our 
Jesus our selfish pride And we fall down on our knees And we fall down on our knees We lift our hands and say that you are all talks about our praise all of Psalms is about praise thanking God being grateful for what God has done in our lives talks about shouting unto God with a voice of triumph and clap your hands all ye people it talks about lifting up hands holy hands unto God these are not just Church of God things say amen these are scriptural admonitions to the people of God to worship him would you take just, I don't know how you do it. You might stand there quietly. You might just shed a little bit of a tear. You might be somebody who's exuberant. You want God to hear and you want the devil to know too. However it is that you praise him. Would you take just a moment with me? Oh, about 30 seconds. And would you just praise God and thank him for the blessings over your life, the healing over your family, the provision that he's given over your life. Would you help me right now to just praise him? Hallelujah. We praise you, Lord. We honor your name, Jesus. Praise God. Amen. You know, when you praise the Lord, you run the devil off. You know that, don't you? The Bible says, resist him and he'll what? Flee. What does flee mean? Run. How do you resist the devil? Well, when he's deceiving lying accusing the bible says he's the accuser of the brethren when he's doing his business when you turn around and say in jesus name i praise god i know god's going to come through that's resisting the lies of the enemy he has to turn and run so i have a feeling we just ran him out of here this morning i have a feeling we've done that amen praise god you may be seated it is so good to see you this morning. What a beautiful crowd. You know, y'all are, y'all are interesting. You're Church of God. And somebody says, well, what's the difference? Well, I've been Church of God now. I'm fourth generation. So I go back to my great, great granny who was Church of God. And it, yeah, oh, come on. And it's always been true. We have a tendency to... You know, when, when we start service at 1045, I look out in the crowd and I'm like, oh, everybody must be on vacation today. And I'm like, oh, goodness. And then it's like I close my eyes and say a little prayer. And then I open my eyes and you've shown up. You're here. <laughs> I think that we, we never can really say who's coming to church until about 10 or 15 minutes after we started. And, and that's okay. But... You look beautiful this morning. That was my way of saying the crowd looks wonderful. Thank you so much for being here. I was excited to be in God's house today. I like the scripture where it says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I like to go to church. I like to go to church. I like to be with you and to, to fellowship with you, to worship with you. You know, I can praise God all on my own. I, I can be out in the field and I can pray and I can seek God and I can hear from him but there's just something different about being in his house and worshiping with you and so I'm thankful for my church this morning I'm thankful for servants 
I'm thankful for people who dedicate and give their lives to service. And this morning, we want to recognize someone. Back, oh, it's been a, a few weeks back, we, we congratulated and we, we celebrated uh, Bill Mann, who had been on our council for many years, and, and his family was here, and, and we, we honored him. But today, I want to honor someone else. Uh, he, he kind of smiled at me, and he looked at me, and he said, you know, brother, I, I really just feel like, you know, I've, I've served a long time. I'd really like to, to let some others help me, uh, help you and, and help the church and, and do, give them an opportunity to serve on our council. We have a bunch of gentlemen who have served. There are 14 of them now, but we have folks who have served on our council, and some have been a pillar of strength for years. When I became pastor, there were several that were seasoned that had been there for, a quite, for quite a while. There's a gentleman who stepped off this last year, and as I said, he, he kind of wanted to give room for some other younger guys to come along, although he's just young as he can be. I don't know where he got that feeling that he thought he might need to step aside. But we honored him for, for his request and love him, and he said, I'll continue to be a support in any way that I can, but I, I really want to step away from the council after almost 40 years of service. I would like, if he would, Elvin Lawson to step forward into the, into the stage area. says up here is praise the Lord <laughs> this gentleman his, him and his family actually his mother was a member of our church and, and he, they have been how many years have your family been a part of this church 60 some years they've been a part of this local congregation and if you knew little Katie little Katie Jones she was just a walking encyclopedia for God's word and Virgie and, and this is their brother and other members of their family, like I said, their mom was, was part of us and, and so many other of their family members. But Brother Elvin Lawson has served faithfully. We, we were trying to add it up. It's at least 40 years that he served on our council, taking care of the business of our church, working with several different pastors, different building programs. He was on the council when we built this building, and he came forward, and he has just got a, a wonderful knowledge base of this church's history. And he is faithful. He is one of those that is here. 630, I don't know how many years, decades, he's come to the church at 630 every morning and prayed for an hour right here in this building. He's carried this church and done a wonderful job of being a support, not only in serving where he could with his hands, changing lights in the parking lots, the, the flag out front. Every time you see a new flag out there, Brother Lawson has been to the church. He takes care of so many little things that other people have no idea that he does. But what he does mostly, that is an example to all of us, is that he serves God, loves God with all of his heart. And I think, in my opinion, a pillar. We've got several pillars that hold this building up. This is one of them. This is one of them. So Brother Lawson, Stratford Heights Church of God, presented to Elvin Lawson in appreciation. It says for 20 plus years, but... I really, we weren't sure, but I'm, we've added it up, but we're sure it's over 40 years of dedication, leadership, and service. Matthew 25, verse 21 says, well done, thou good and faithful servant. We love you, we thank you, and you are an example to all of us, and we love you very much, sir. God bless you. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, Brother Lawson. It's people like him that, that make the church uh, feel like it's strong no matter what storms come, no matter what 
trials it faces or fires spring up. A wonderful man of God. Almost, this is a great day. This is a wonderful day. Almost 10 years ago, a young man wandered into our youth service back in the gym. He jumped in with both sandals, shorts, cut-off t-shirts. He rededicated his life to the Lord. He was filled with the Holy Spirit and called into ministry. I'll never forget one of the times he was sitting on my couch at my house and had his hands on his head as he was weeping. And he was telling me about how God had called him to ministry. And I knew already in my heart, I just knew that God had his hand on him and was doing a special work in his life. He found himself, one of our beautiful young ladies, he fell madly in love, and they got married. And they have two little beautiful girls. Now, I know them as Sparky and Nemo, but you would know them as Jocelyn and Gabrielle. Both of them, Stephanie and Brad, served as youth interns in Oasis. That was how they kind of got their start. They started training in leadership. Brad went on to become an armor bearer to the pastor when I became pastor in 2007. He took part, he took a part-time position here at the church and accepted the role as discipleship pastor. Then we added to his portfolio young adult pastor and so he started juggling all of that and working a full-time job. But not only was he working at the church, giving part-time to that, and really it was full-time, and then he was working at Midtown Automotive as a full-time employee. He was juggling all of that, trying to get it all done, but on the side, he was also preparing himself. The Bible says, study to show yourself approved, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. He was studying and preparing manuals and books that he had to read and memorize for a test. And he went ahead and passed the 300 questions on the exhorters test and got his first level of license in the Church of God. He entered the CAMS program and went through uh, calling and ministry training. Then once he passed that test, we acknowledged him and we were proud of him. And he went on to, to go to the level two. He got his ordained license, studied for that 300 question test, and passed that with flying colors and went into the ministerial internship program, the MIP program for the Church of God. In that process and time, he's been serving not only faithfully here, working that full-time job, but then he's also filling in in state, uh, wherever the state of Ohio, the Church of God in Ohio would ask him to fill in and help with different committees and different, um, different assignments that he would have, and he would take all this on. I don't know how he did it all. I know he was exhausted a lot, but he uh, worked hard. Last January, we approached him, the council and I did, about bringing him on full-time, and he felt like, <laughs> finally... <laughs> This had happened, and he really had wanted this, and, and he came on our church to help me as assistant pastor, and he's done a great job. I'm very proud of him. We are very proud of him. A couple of weeks ago, Pastor Brad took on the highest level of licensure in the Church of God. He passed the testing for his ordained bishop's license. This is the highest level of credential in the Church of God. He's one of the very youngest ministers in our denomination to obtain this level of license. As a matter of fact, it was an issue of great debate at the last General Assembly about them young 30-year-olds. This guy has accomplished that. He has full rights to the General Assembly floor of our denomination. He will help in electoral voting, doctrinal and policy revisions, and he can serve in any capacity in the Church of God, whether that's state, national, or international. And besides myself, I believe Orville Robinson is the only other ordained bishop in our church. Is there someone else who is an ordained bishop in the Church of God? We got one? Brother, stand up. Brother Robinson, there he is. Orville, you stand up. Brother Orville. These guys have, are ordained bishops in the Church of God. So we have, amen. I received mine six years ago, almost seven years ago now, and I'm an ordained bishop. And I am excited to announce to you this morning, one of the youngest guys 
in the Church of God is a member of our church and on our staff today. Brad, we appreciate you. We recognize you. We're going to set you forth in just a few moments as the newly appointed ordained bishop in the Church of God. And we're proud of you. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I want to recognize Brad's family who are visiting here with us today. Uh, Jim and Jody Reffitt, you're back there. This is mom and dad. We want you to see mom and dad right back there. He loves his family. He was pacing the floor waiting for them to come to church this morning. And he was excited that they were here. His brother, Josh and Crystal, and their daughter is back in Children's Church. Heidi is with them today. Josh, you and Crystal, would you stand, please? We want to recognize you for being here today. Amen. They are, they are good friends to all of us. We, we all in fellowship together. And many of you may not know this, but Josh's company, Pristine Cleaning, uh, they take care of our church. So this guy, if you've seen him walk in the halls, you know that he's the owner. He's looking around to make sure everybody's doing their job. But we're excited about them being here with us today. Also, is Valerie in here? Is, is she working in the nursery? Our nursery director is Valerie Luby. Many of you don't know, some of you may not know, that that's Stephanie's mom. And she is uh, one of our staff members here at the church as well. Thomas and Becca, are they here? Yet they usually come in maybe a few minutes after. Thomas and Becca Luby, that's their family as well. I wanted you to know them and know who they are. But Brad and Stephanie, his beautiful wife Stephanie, I would ask them to please step into the altar if you would. If you're a council member today and you're here in service, would you please come? Our pastoral and ministerial staff, would you please come? And ministers, other ordained bishops, if you would come into the altar. Come here into the middle here. For just a moment, I, get to, I have to take off my pastor hat and I put on my regional elder hat. And as regional elder over region eight in the state of Ohio for the Church of God, it is my duty at this point to call us into a church conference. And that means Jim Long will make sure these are entered into the minutes of the church. This is an official ceremony, one to be very proud of. I know I've actually been where you are. I know how hard it is. It's not easy. And what you've done is a great accomplishment. You've taken your desire and you've taken your calling and you've put it together and you've put that, not only your service, but your excellence, you've given that to God and you've studied to show yourself worthy of the calling. We're proud of you. We're thankful for you, for the work that you do, both of you. Uh, Stephanie went through the ministerial internship program with him. She continues to study right alongside with him and she's called the ministry as good as him. She can out preach him any day of the week. We love them, their gifts and their service to our church. And today, we officially charge you and set you forth as an ordained bishop in the church of God. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 says, I charge you, therefore, Paul to Timothy, before God and Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up to themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside into what the Bible calls fables, stories. But you, Paul to Timothy, be watchful in all things. Endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist and fulfill your ministry. We charge you and we call into conference and set you forth as a church that is proud of you. And before God himself, we set you forth.
step forward. Would, would you stand, congregation? Would you stretch your hands towards this altar today? In the name of Jesus. Lord. Would you one more time help me appreciate this couple? Amen. You may be seated. Our ushers are coming to serve you this morning to give you an opportunity to worship the Lord with your gifts, with your missions giving with your tithe, with your offering. As they come this morning, I would thank you. Thank you that you're part of working the work of God in Middletown and in all the world. We bless and we touch so many different people with our gifts. It blows me away sometimes to think about the missionaries in South America. Bobby Lynch is one of our missionaries down there that we support. We have a little church this morning that's meeting right now in Quito, Ecuador. You turn the lights on for them, you pay their rent, and you help them feed over 400 children a week. And that church thanks you, sends messages constantly, wanting to thank and wanting to, to let the Stratford Heights Church of God know that they love them and appreciate their gifts. We help missionaries in the Benelux is what we call it. It's, it's Belgium, Luxembourg, Germany, and England, and also in France. Brother Christian Swift will be with us in about a month. He's going to be coming to speak on a Sunday evening. And he is our missionary that, that serves in that capacity. We also, you helped us build a medical care facility in Romania. And it's up and running. The missionaries are going strong. And people are coming from all over the world to work and, and serve in time, uh, mission time there in Romania. You help make that happen. You're a giving church. You're people that believe in the vision. You see, we're not about, and I, I never really was one who, who got, you know, when I served 18 years as youth minister, I never really was somebody who, who worried about the finances. I, I just wanted to make sure I had my budget for the youth group. But when I became pastor, it became my responsibility to be concerned about that. Uh, we have staff that have families. I worry and I make sure I'm praying constantly so that we take care of them, so that we make sure the bills are paid. You know, you in your home, you have to work on your budget and make sure you keep that um, up to date and keep it, keep it strong, and I have to do the same. It became my responsibility. Every time I've ever got on my knees and prayed and asked God for what we need in this church, He has always, always come through. Every time I get down, and perhaps in a month it seems like it's going to be short or it's going to be close, I've found that I get on my face, and many times I've asked the council, I've said, guys, 
I need you to pray with me and thus believe God for the gifts for this church so that we make sure we meet budget every single time God has always come through so I want to thank you because that means you're listening you're listening to God and you're obeying God and I want to appreciate you today I don't talk very much about money no one will ever come in our church and accuse that pastor of being all about money I hardly ever mention it I trust you that you're obeying God but today I want to thank you thank you for being a part I give just like you do and I give above and beyond what I'm asked because I believe in God's economy and the way he works if I trusted Obamacare Bush care Republican care or Democrat care we'd all be in trouble wouldn't we I've learned to place all of my eggs in God's basket and by doing that he always comes through and so I want to thank you for being a part of that today and thank you for your pledges and your promises to help us in building this building we are closer than we've ever been and as I've already mentioned before I left and went to Columbia last time we are just about ready to unveil some wonderful news for you and I'll just keep giving you those commercials because I'm not ready to tell you just yet but I can't wait till I can share with you about some of the exciting things that we're now ready to get rolling on. So thank you for your gifts today. Thank you for your tithes. Thank you for your missions offerings. And thank you that you love your church. Let's pray. Father, we give you honor. We give you praise. I pray that you will bless the gift because, God, what I've noticed is that when we give cheerfully, as your word talks about, you bless us. Press down, shaken together, and running over. So, Lord, I thank you for the gifts. I thank you for those who, are, who honor your word. I thank you for those that are giving and sacrifice because, Lord, you are proving to be a mighty, mighty God of blessing. So we give you praise and thanks as we dedicate the gifts today to you. Please bless our missionaries and use all the loose offering today as we know it goes around the world. And we ask you to meet their needs through us. In Jesus' name, amen. That's when daily. 